Hi, I'm Dick Peters. And I'm Bob Dembinski. We're in the control room of Norfolk Cable Studios. The program you're seeing today was produced entirely by Norfolk residents. We took a short training course to learn how to operate the equipment and how television programs are produced. You can do it too. If you'd like to get in on the action, just contact us here at the station. Show them the address, Bob. You can write to us at Norfolk Cable Corporation, Box 181 here in Norfolk. Or call us anytime at 520-0407. Now, if you don't have pencil and paper handy, we'll leave that information for you over on Channel 8 so you can get it after today's program. And now, on with the show. Show? Uh, let me see if I remember. This is the button deck. No, I, no, I no. thought it was this one here, Bob. This one? You better oh, try. I, I think maybe this. Oh, okay, try this. here we go. On a warm, late August afternoon, what better to do than to take a flight? Well, these flights are different. These flights aren't piloted in the normal way. As you can see, they're a little small. They won't hold you. These little planes come in many different shapes, sizes, and colors, and are controlled by those two little wires you see on the right there. At the bottom of your screen, you see two wires coming out of the wing. Those wires control the flight of the aircraft. We will see later. These planes are lined up, ready to go. This happens to be in Bridgeport, where there was a contest held recently. Before we see some of these planes in the air, let's take a look at them on the ground. Let's inspect the fine detail work done. Those engines may be, look small, but they are extremely powerful. Look at the sleek lines on this. It's 
fairly heavy airplane as, as airplanes go, but it flies extremely well. Um, we're, getting it, we're getting it set up basically today. Today's not really the day to, to set it up. It's a contest day, but we decided to do that anyway. Um, other things, contest season, we, uh, we typically have eight or nine contests a year all throughout the East Coast. We, uh, we, share, we share friendships with guys from New York, New Jersey, Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, and basically each local club, whatever state they're in, typically has one big contest a year. So there's never really, there's never really a lack of places you can go and spend a weekend. And one of the things, one of the things this sport does, or hobby, whatever you want to call it, one of the things it does is it gets you involved with a group of people that are very friendly and helpful, and we all get out and we have a good time. I'm fortunate, my wife enjoys the hobby. She gets out and she's, she's judging competition today. And my parents are here, this is the first time that my mother's seen me fly, so it's, it's a fun day today. And we're just gonna go out, and have a good time, and see how we do. Here's a couple more aircraft, ready to go. Here's one coming in for landing. Just watch. There it goes. Before we go see an actual contest flight, let's see what the builders of these two aircraft have to say. Uh, Greg and I come from Middletown, Connecticut, and we've been flying about five or six years. We've been flying about four. And I got started at it when I was just a little tyke about his age. And my father started flying control line. And through school and so forth, I kind of leveled off. But as I got out of school and so forth, I went back into control line. And I got real serious about it, and I started flying competitively, and that's where I found my niche. I really like flying competitively. And when my son was born, I kind of wanted him to get into a sport that was nice. It wasn't athletics. It wasn't um, anything to do with team or anything like that. It was like a father and son thing. If he wanted to play sports, he could do it on his own, and I'd help him. But I wanted us to be together, father and son, to keep close tabs on each other. I grew up with my boy, and I found it's the hobby I can do it with. I can build airplanes with him. I can uh, go on trips with him like this weekend. We're from Connecticut, and my wife is home, and the father and son are together. And I think that means a lot. Uh, the more time you spend together with, with the son, I think, the more relation, the better relationship you have with the son. And as he grows up, I hope he, he understands this. And, uh, he flies competitively. He's a junior. Got a few trophies at home, and we're both proud of what we're doing. We really like what we're doing. And I think the biggest reason is the people we meet. And the people that we know and meet, and we go to different meets. And it's really interesting. It's more of a people hobby than it is a flying hobby for us. We both like to build, we both like to paint, and we do it together at home, we do it together on weekends, and when we go on our RV. It's, it's a nice hobby, and I hope if anybody else is looking, that they can get into the hobby and have as much fun as this father and son thing has. This is a modified Magnum with an ST60 in it. It uh, was trimmed by Wendy Yurnowski down in New Jersey. And Vic Salsi did the engine. We're kind of a team. Vic isn't here this weekend. But we're kind of a team. And we do the motor work. I do the, the airplane work uh, on the 60s. My son's airplane is a ringmaster. And when I first started flying, I flew Bob Hunt's Genesis. And I liked the design so well. I didn't really want a ringmaster, so I built a, a so-called Genesis. And it works well with a Fox 35, 10-6 prop. And he's been flying junior with this airplane for about two years. I'm well, Dave Cook from Norfolk, Mass. I've been a competitor and a judge and an administrator in model aviation for about 30 years. 
And what you're looking at is one of the highest refinements of control line model, model aviation. We have about 130,000 members nationally that fly radio, indoor, and this sport, which is control line. Now, if you pan to the circle, we can see an airplane beginning to start. The flyer is just walking to the lines, and he will pick up the handle and give a signal to take off. On the other side of the circle are two judges who will score him through a set of maneuvers that are much like figures in ice skating. He scores so much on each maneuver, and he has to do each maneuver exactly by the book. He just did his take off and he's doing his level lap with your under judge. Now, as he's satisfied with the airplane, he'll give a hand signal to the judge and saying that he will start his first maneuver. There's the hand signal. Now, he's pointing to the judges that he's going to do the maneuvers downwind and the judges move. And his first maneuver, he will pull straight up in front of the judges. He will go over his head at 90 degrees and pull out upside down on the other side of the circle. Now, this pull out's going to be four to six feet. He's a little high. He'll go back over the top and he'll pull out upright. Now, he gives the judges two level lats by which to write their scores down. He's going to come around again. He's going to do three inside loops and recover and invert it. There's one loop, two loops, three loops, going to come around again and recover upside down. Now he flies the airplane upside down for scoring, and the judges are going to judge him on how level. He's supposed to be four to six feet from the ground. He's not supposed to bobble or move or jump up and down. It's a little hard to hold up with light wind today. And he'll go around six times. At the end of the sixth lap, he'll start into outside loops. And the top of the loop should be at 45 degrees, the bottom at four to six feet. And he's gonna complete three loops and recover right side up. Now all of this is being controlled by his hand with an up and down motion. The airplane's traveling at about 60 to 65 miles an hour. Here goes his next maneuver, which is inside square loop. Notice the square corner. Now he gives the judge two laps. He's going to climb to 45 degrees and go into a real chicken maneuver, which is outside loop. Straight down dive, tuck under, straight up and around, and you'll put a second one in on top of that. Now he gives the judges again two laps. He'll come around and do triangular loop. You'll have three corners. First corner, second corner, third corner. Now he does another one on top of it to show the judge that he can overlay with precision. Now you start the first of his figure eight maneuvers and you'll do a round horizontal figure eight starting now. Inside loop, through the middle and around to an outside loop. Now you'll repeat that pass, complete, and recover to normal. Now comes the tough part. He's going to come back and put square corners on that maneuver. And this is one of the toughest maneuvers in the pattern. Here we go. Straight up, straight across the top, straight down, pull out close to the ground, outside, back through it again to show his overlay capability. Now the timing on that has to be right there. If he misses, he buries it in this macadam. Now he's going to stand the figure eight up and do a vertical eight. Here he goes, an inside loop to pick up speed, straight up through the climb, and this is tough for the airplane. Back around, and now an overlay with a second figure eight. Now he gives him two laps, and now he's going to put in a hourglass figure, and the hourglass figures are real toughy. It's going to be shaped like an hourglass. Here's a pull-up, a diagonal climb, a straight across the top, a tuck around, and a better than 90 at the bottom. Real tough for the airplane and the flyer. Now he's going to come around. He's going to put a round figure eight straight up over his head. He'll pull up in front of the judges like right now. 
Oh, he's going to give him an extra life. Still got the scurry. Here he goes. Straight up. Inside. Outside. Now he'll overlay that. Fly the same path. He'll wrap around through the middle, a dive to back the altitude and level up. Now comes the last maneuver, which is a four-leaf clover. Another puppy. You'll climb to about 45 degrees. You'll hold the airplane at altitude. He pulls an inside loop first. And here we go about now. Inside, straight across, a dive at the ground for an outside, straight up to the middle, another outside, dive at the ground for an inside, straight over his head, and pull out right side up. Now he's completed the standard pattern. And he simply waits for the engine to run out to be judged for landing. Both take off and landing are judged. It takes about five years in the army to get to this level. He has invested in that airplane about uh, 90 to 100 dollars worth of engines, probably another 150 dollars worth of balls and materials and paint and hardware, and about three months worth of work. So if he misses one of these and buries it in this macadam, he's looking a long time to get it. You can see he's kind of just standing there, letting it run out the fuel. He's trying to make a quit now. There we go. Almost. Now we have three levels under this one. We have beginner, intermediate, advanced, and this is the extra class. Here goes another loop to make a quit. Now the engine stopped and he's being judged all the way down in that descent and how smoothly he sets it on the ground. Uh, he got a bounce. That's about five points off. And he'll roll out to a stop and he's completed his pattern. It's a good hobby. We have uh, kids all the way from 10 years old to uh, 60 years old, which I am, that still fly and compete on a regular basis. We hold the nationals each year, which 80 to 85 people will fly in this class. But we have about 50 guys in New England that are active and fly at this kind of competition. And as I say, it's a good hobby, a lot of fun, not that much money, and it's great for kids. It teaches them woodworking, engine working, metal working, and it teaches them hard work and dedication. And if you're interested, come on out and talk to us. Thank you. This is the plane you just saw in competition flight. Let's find out more about it from its builder and flyer. It's a scratch-built airplane, meaning that we designed and built it ourselves from scratch. The, uh, it's covered with a silk span material, which is a paper, and then it's painted with uh, aircraft dope, and then covered with clear coats of aircraft clear, and then hand rubbed to get it shiny like that. It takes about, it took about three weeks just to rub it out. It takes about a full winter to build one. I filled my own gas tanks that are inside as well that are uh, made of sheet metal. We solder those up. We make the control push pull rods out of uh, arrow shafts that they use in archery. The, uh, the nose has a slight coating of fiberglass cloth from here forward to give it some strength and also to help dampen vibrations so the engine will be smoother. Yeah, how much? Yeah. Cost? Yeah. Uh, the engine's about a hundred dollars, and we probably have another hundred or so in the in the airframe. We just buy wood and buy bits and pieces, so I never really keep track of the cost. So I expect a couple hundred dollars. How often are you flying? How many hours? Uh, this airplane's uh, better than two years old. Uh, I'd say uh, it's probably got 300 flights on it, something like that. Probably fly a little better than 100 flights a year. Has it been done? Uh, this one hasn't been damaged, no, not yet. <laughs>
appreciate that. What was your name? My name is Dick Carco. I'm, uh, I'm from uh, Drake at Mass. Repair is a constant problem. Now here are some of the trophies that were distributed at the end of this competition. Of course, the uh, big one is for the top prize winner. I don't know whether you noticed, but Dave Cook was the first. In Besides the stunt competition you've already seen, there's also combat competition. Here, as you can see, there are two uh, people in the center flying, each flying their own aircraft. Uh, when they initially took off, both planes had streamers attached to their tail. As you can see, only one has a partial streamer left. The object, uh, among other things, is to try to clip as much as the streamer of your opponent's uh, plane without, of course, damaging your plane, its plane, or the ground. These aircraft are not as well finished as those we've already seen because they occasionally will hit the ground with some force. This competition can be exciting. It can be dangerous. You can trip. Your lines can get tangled. Sooner or later, you're going to run out of fuel. One has already came down. This is the last one. Here are some of these combat planes on the ground. These will be going up in a few minutes. As you can see, they're without landing gear. They usually just hand launch. A lot of planes, a lot of competition going on here today.
I did the same thing. We just ended up flying last in our... our I wonder where I am in the flight order. Uh, this is another complete showing of a competition flight. If you recall Dave Cook's description of the flight, the same stunts will be performed here. Try to catch them. As you can see, uh, occasionally there are three competitions going on simultaneously. The one you have seen before is an expert class. This is more or less a beginner's class. Those that have not been flying as long as the others. If you don't watch your plane, but watch someone else's, you could be in a little bit of trouble. This blacktop is hard. And here he goes upside down. judges watching his every move. Catching all these moves. Certainly glad the ground isn't taking any of these.
And a nice landing to a nice flight. in the hobby. Uh, I'm Dave Cook. I live in Norfolk. I'm in the phone book on Maple Street. Uh, we have some pretty active club meetings. If you've ever flown or are interested in flying, come and get in touch with us. We fly at the Boardman School about every other week. And we give training, we give building lessons, and it's especially great hobby for kids. Thanks again.